Hello, this is Mrs. Neubauer, and let's work on our penmanship. So, which letter is the laziest in the alphabet? E. It's always in bed. Get it? B-E-D in bed. Okay, so on our lesson goal number 20, to learn how to write letters without a center line. So we're getting rid of that dashed center line today. We're graduating to just plain. Remember our goal is to eventually write on line paper. So there's no center line. There's no dashes to help us. We're going to start that today. Before we get started, I want to show you kind of something that you're going to need to do. So if you're starting off a sentence with a capital letter, remember that that capital letter usually uses that dashed line when we were practicing. So what you do is, with, you can see it's a different color pink, you're going to have to imagine, it's imaginary lines. So you're going to have to start your O the same size as the H of your crossbar, or the H of crossbar. Then your next letter is going to be the same as your O. So what you're using is you're using the letter next to it to help. Because really, that line isn't there anymore. I'm going to erase it just to see. So basically, you start your capital, and this would be the dashed line. So your O is going to work on the dashed line, the M, and the O, the E, and the M. Okay? Seeing there's no line, it's gone. Now, if you are just writing a sentence, and, or maybe just writing an answer to a word, you probably might not capitalize it, like Barry. So the same thing with Barry. Remember, Barry has a circle, and that attaches the dashed line. So the E is going to be the same size as that part, the uh, circle of your B, the R and the E, the R and the R. So what you're doing is you're using the letter next to it to continue to write on a nice consistent, consistent means the same, the same line. So really we don't have that dashed line anymore, that's imaginary. But you are using the letter on the left of it to help you draw and uh, write the letter on the right. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we're going to practice. I have lots of practice sheets for us today and hopefully we can do some together. All right, I'm going to switch cameras. Okay, so hopefully you have, there's a lot for 20, uh, lesson 20. We have 20A is going to be your medium, um, 20B is your small, and then 20C is your wide rule. So there's plenty of sheets for today. Um, this is probably going to be a two or three day lesson, so you can spend some time. I'm just going to show you again what I was talking about on my little uh, whiteboard as we write the letters. So just like I always like to do, um, it's good to trace because now you're tracing and we don't have any dashed line. And then we will write some words together. So our uh, alphabet theme for this one is vegetables. So vegetables. Um, okay, so first of all, capital letters are always going to, especially in this, going to go top to bottom. And then remember that your V, the top of your V, is going to match up with that crossbar on your A, because that is your halfway point. The top of the V is going to be the top of your O. The C, remember C goes underneath and then comes up and touches that imaginary dash line. So you're using the top of the A to help with the top of, I'm sorry, that top of the C to help with the top of the A. And the top of the A to help with D. So there's a lot of things going on. This is going to be kind of challenging. The top of the O and the top of the D. Not, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say the top of the D, because that would be the top of the D, the mid part of the D, the circle, the circle stroke. Okay, so let's try that without tracing. So I'm going to do uh, a little bit of spacing, pretending we're writing it in a sentence, so we can practice that too. So have our A, and now we have to start the A off right in the center. So this is where you can really start. Okay. Make sure you have about a half and half. Okay, now we have our V. So the first 
letter stem starts there, goes back up. Make sure it's all aligned. And I'm going to have my O. So my O relates to my V. Remember that imaginary line. Good. Stay in. I'm not going underneath my bottom baseline. Have my C. So this one's going to be a little bit challenging because we go underneath that imaginary line. Then we're going to meet the imaginary line and come back around. So that's definitely challenging. We have our A. So the A is going to use that line. And our D, the same thing with D. Use the A to start my D. That imaginary middle line. Bring down the letter stem and my O. Use the top of my D, top of my O. Oof, that was really hard. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are doing good at home. Working on that penmanship. Okay, so uh, broccoli is going to be the same. Um, let's see, um, maybe we could do cauliflower because cauliflower has some upper and lower together. So let's try cauliflower. So after you have traced it, um, you guys can trace it later. I just want to make sure I'm covering enough for your lesson and you can practice at home. So let's try cauliflower. So we're going to use a little space. Capital C touches the top and bottom. Good. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have a middle. So you kind of have to estimate over where the middle is for that top of the A. So about middle. Good. It's okay to do a dot. This is practicing. Getting used to writing with no dash line. It is, it's harder than it looks. It's definitely harder than it looks. So you're going to move to the right, using the top for your U. A little letter space there. Good. Now we have our L. Get some water. The L starts at the top and comes back down. Not too bad. And then we have our I. Okay. And it goes in the middle. Okay, so remember for F, sometimes you can start F at the top and come down, or sometimes you can do the crossbar. So in this instance, since I don't have a dash, I'm going to do the crossbar first. But it's up to you. If you're starting off your sentence, you can start off with the curve and then come down. Cauliflower. Okay. Another L. It's a little easier to write without lines when you touch the top and bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so my top of my O needs to stay with that crossbar. O. Okay, so the top of the W has to be at the top of the O. And hopefully you're understanding what you have to look for. So there's an imaginary line that's following us each time you write a letter. So don't worry about, you know, the R just yet. Just get your E down. Once you get your E down, then you can do your R. And then R in a while. Remember, R is just that little curve at the top. Good. So this is definitely going to take you a while to do um, medium line practice A. Um, I gave you plenty to choose from. <laughs> I have all the vegetables. So this goes through J. We have K, kale through turnip, and the third page is yeshiva. I've never had that, and zucchini. So you can continue to practice without that center line. So this is definitely reaching a whole new level of hardness. Okay, so that's just 20A. Now 20B is the small. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. To get more, so this is why it's going to take you a few days. I gave you words spacing too. So we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So you can practice writing words. And actually, you know what? Let's try one. Because it's a little more difficult when you don't have that imaginary line next to it. So let's try the 
First you can trace it or you can just start writing. If you feel like you don't need to trace anymore, your letters are good, they're not shaky, they're not wobbly, you don't have to continue to trace. It's just there if you need it. All right, so let's do, okay, so remember middle, so H starts under the half, touches the middle, it comes back down. So H is a hard one to start off right away. So T didn't have a middle, H had to go under the middle and then hit it. Now that I have the middle with my H, my E will be a little easier. Oh gosh, there's another pun, E for easy. I did not mean to do that, it was a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so remember we have a letter space and then we have to start our Q for quick. So you kind of estimate, okay, this looks about good. Start off your circle with the circle cousin and got our Q. Once you get that word, then, I'm sorry, with a letter, then your word is going to come along easier. You've got that imaginary line that you're trying to make sure it all lines up. So just use the letter before, and that should help. The problem is, is like the H, the C goes underneath. So it gets a little challenging when the letters don't start on that middle imaginary line. And Hey, I almost did an E because the E was above it. <laughs> i got to make sure I'm spelling it right quick. Okay, remember this goes to the middle, and then that goes to the bottom. All right, so A has alphabet of vegetables and two pangrams to practice. You might just want to take a day to do this. Then I have the small. So we have provinces and towns in Canada. So we just practiced the U.S. the last few lessons ago. Now we have um, Canada. And we're going to do Mexico too coming up. So we'll make sure we get all North America. Um, same thing. You can trace first and then try writing one on your own. Try to see which one looks like we could do together. I guess it, let's just do Alberta. So. You want to do a little space, start your A. It's in so many A's, you're looking, doing A's with your eyes closed, as they say. And then we're going to start in the middle. So that's always nice when the first letter starts in the middle, because that's going to help with the next letter. But L doesn't need to help, because L goes top to bottom. And B as well. So now, B has to go and touch that middle line. So start underneath, touch the middle line, and come back around. And we're getting smaller, so it might be a little harder, or it might be easy for you. I don't know. Remember, B has to go about the same size as the B. R goes to the top, and then we have a little curve up to the top. T, do your crossbar first, and then do your vertical. And our A. Okay, not bad. So we're going to go through all of these and we have through the end. So lots of work. Um, if you don't want to practice them, you think you got the practice done, then you can just write your word maybe twice. So that's how your level is. If you're still struggling and you're struggling with a uh, were letters in between and the spacing of the words, then you might want to continue to trace. I also included two pangram sentences, so you can practice uh, writing without the center line with words. And I also included in each of your A, B, and C just a plain one if you wanted to try just some on your own. Okay, so that could be a whole nother day of lesson. And the last one is your wide rule. Remember, that's our goal, the wide rule, so we need to practice. So here's our Mexico. Uh, Mexico has states and um, different cities in Mexico. So A through Z, and a wide rule. Let's just, uh, maybe we'll just do Baja here. So I'm going to do a letter space. Let's do my B. Okay, so B is a good way to start because it goes in the center, so I can go over and start my A. 
my J. Remember, J is going to go in the middle and come around and do a little curve. And then I have my dot at the top. And then I have a another A. Uh -huh. Good. Now the J, the J might have a little bit, uh, might be a little bit too much space, but because of that under, it kind of um, you can you can use less space. So the problem is, is you don't want to touch the A with that J. But let's see if we can get a little closer. So you might need to start your J. Like don't have that much space. Maybe come over a little bit. There we go. You just don't want to have, I call it white space. You don't want to have a little white space because then it almost looks like it's just a space in the words. And you're, once you get used to reading, you don't, your mind likes to have like no space in between. Some of these I cannot pronounce, but they are states and countries, I'm sorry, cities in Mexico. <laughs> okay. And then the last one, of course, we have some more pangrams for you. And you can practice not only the letter spacing without the center line, but also the word spacing. So this could be a whole nother day for you. Okay, so to recall, um, recall we have first, you're going to get good at the medium. I wouldn't go for the wide rule first, but that's just me. <laughs> you're going to get good at writing the medium without the center line. You're going to go through your alphabet of vegetables and your sentences. Then you're going to do your small. You're going to go through your uh, providence and cities of Canada until you get really good at the small and the sentences. Then you're going to be, okay, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the advanced one. I'm ready for the wide rule. And you're going to do your wide rule and go through the Mexico states and cities and sentences. So lots of to do. So I would say at least maybe day, it could almost be two days for each one based on the lesson. So this lesson, um, Hopefully won't take you too much and hopefully you're getting really comfortable writing. All right, so I feel like we did a really good job accomplishing our goal with the lesson. It was a little longer than we have because we started a whole new thing. We took away that center dash line. So when you're so used to printing with the guidelines and you take it away, it's a little uncomfortable. It's like day one when we were learning our lowercase and that's okay. Um, that's part of learning. Uh, you're, you're, you're going to do actually more of taking away. And then hopefully, in a few lessons, we'll be writing on that wide roll of paper. Okay? So remember, our goal was to write letters without the center line. I feel like we accomplished it. This was really hard. Give yourself a pat on the back. You know, high five somebody in your family and have a great day. Remember to keep practicing and progress over progress.